Hello Internet, Hewlett here with another Burn and Learn and Jane's home, yay! For Valentine's Day even, she got back last night, um, we had a lovely little breakfast this morning uh, with um, you know cups of tea and uh, and uh, flowers and cards and um, and she even brought some prezzies back from Berlin, which is kind of fun. She was just at the Berlin um, Berlinale Film Festival, so she's back now and everybody's much happier for it. And also what's really nice about it is that she took Bratlett to school this morning, so she gets some quality time with him. And uh, so I got to hop with, on some quality time with the torture device. So, so um, I have already done my burn and learn. It's not even 10 o'clock, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm back on track now that Jane's home. And uh, burn and learn today, I should tell you what a burn and learn is. A burn and learn is my bid to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son and to enjoy the twilight years with my brilliant, beautiful wife, Jane. I hate exercise. It is so boring. So I like to learn something while I'm doing it. Then I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible, uh, something I am accomplishing well today. Uh, real workout today. Yeah, I definitely felt it today. Um, I actually did 48 minutes, went a little long because I sort of split it up into two, into two sections, which I shall tell you about now. First section was uh, learning lines. So I have an audition today, uh, which I was supposed to do yesterday, but uh, it was just such a disaster of a day. Um, poor old Baz was having a hard time at school and, um, and uh, just new school, new friends, all that kind of stuff. So I went and met him for lunch and, and hung out. So um, anyways, uh, so yesterday was a disaster for auditions. Uh, so I decided to do it today and uh, I'll put it on tape down here. And uh, so I, I learned all the lines today. And again, it's just repetition. Just go over and over and over and over and over again. Kind of fun. Um, sort of recurring bad guy in a new Netflix uh, series, um, all superhero-y kind of stuff. And um, uh, so it would be fun. I mean, they're casting a very wide net, shall we say. <laughs> like very, when you see, like, a, um, they're looking for someone between the ages of 40 and 65, uh, any ethnicity, um, you know, uh, male or female. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty wide, pretty wide a net. We'll see. So those rarely go my way. But um, uh, it's a fun part. And it's, it, I, as I say, I... I sort of feel like at this point um, in my career, I just like to do the the auditions that are fun, if that makes sense. If it's a fun acting project for me, um, even just the process of auditioning, it's it's kind of fun to do. So, and I and I kind of like filming it all downstairs and stuff. So I'm doing that today. Um, and the second part of my burn learn was back to surveillance capitalism, where they are talking about um, you know this collection of data and and who who gets to see it, um, who decides what to do with it, and who decides. Who decides what to do with it? And they're talking about, she's talking about this, this strange sense of inevitability in Silicon Valley about this ubiquity of sensors everywhere. That, that the idea that everything is going to be connected to the internet is just seen as an inevitability. And is that the case? It's, it's something that is said and is uh, talked about in a kind of a, almost like a dogma and a, and a belief system that, that isn't given the same kind of... Um, of testing that most things that are most declarations that come out of out of Silicon Valley and out of business and, and government for that matter. So um, she's just saying like, hey, wait a second. I mean, you know, the idea that it is inevitable that everything is going to be connected to the internet, giving these people or these companies the information that they want. You know, why is that the case? And why is everyone just assuming that that is the case? And is there is that truly the case, or is there things we can do to, to are there things we can do to, to, to sort of stop that or to at least uh, mitigate some of the damage that could be done by them? So just, um, uh, again, another way of looking at all of this, um, uh, her concern, uh, she sort of talks about these insurance companies that have the ability to shut a car down when payments aren't made, um, or to penalize um, drivers' insurance rates based on where they drive and, and how they drive and all this kind of stuff, uh, which I've got to say, I, I don't see as a bad thing. She's saying it's behavioral moderate, uh, um, uh, 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 modification. <laughs> Jeez, I have a little, a little, a little aneurysm there. Um, yeah, so it's behavioral modification that she's, that she's worried about. Um, but I would say that, you know, if you want to pay for insurance, I want my insurance rates to go down because I drive safely or, or not at all is the case for me for very little anyways. Um, you know, so why wouldn't I want some kind of a sensor to, sh to prove to them that I am in fact using the car very little and driving it, um, like an old man. Um, uh, so, um, so yeah, I, I again, I find myself disagreeing with her, with her sort of concerns about these privacy things. The thing she points out, which I think are things that would have to be sorted out is things like, okay, let's say you didn't make your payment, you shut the car down, what if there's a snowstorm, what if there's a kid in the back, what if you have to go to hospital, what if, I mean, there are many things that could come into play. Um, I have a feeling that, you know, these are pretty dumb devices right now. Eventually, I'm sure there will be a back and forth um, available when things like that happen. So anyways, um, 
uh, and of course, then there'll be a whole market for um, people producing fake, safe driving data. Like someone will pay me to put a, 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 a sensor on my car and drive like an old man around, and then they'll use that data. Or, you know, there'll be all sorts of ways around, they'll try to get around this. I'm sure. Um, it's kind of an interesting, makes for an interesting future. And then speaking of future, she talks about this idea that there is this uh, inevitability to the Internet of Things. The idea that that this is going to happen no matter what. So, uh, and she's saying we should question that because, you know, declarations like this in Silicon Valley are usually questioned, and and then this one doesn't seem to be. This is just sort of just this. Oh well, it's inevitable. Everything's going to be wired. They're going to know everything. Oh well, what can we do? And she's saying that maybe this is a tool of surveillance capitalists to, uh, to 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 create a nice docile society that will that will just accept this stuff and then uh, become. Uh, uh, the generators for all this data that they can use. So there you go. There you have it. That is my burn for the day. I better go off and do my audition now. So until we geek again, sweaty or not, generally sweaty, here I come. Cheerio!